Okay, here we are again at the Hats of the 20th Century, Hats and More Museum, and we're trying to look at the display items I have here. So we've gotten about this far, and we're just going to start in again. My glove box had this picture of some beautiful ladies of the time period, and of course it's a postcard, they always are, and it also had a pretty little calling card in it. Um... The sympathy to me is air. Oh, I can't read it. But anyway, uh, that's what was in there, in case you wondered. And here's another pair of the uh, overgates, a longer pair. And we're going to have a couple more of those in brown and lighter brown. So I'll just a little closer look at that. They were hanging on the edge of the baby stroller. And we kind of forgot to mention them. Um course all of those had to be if you were patient and had little fingers you could do it with your fingers but these uh, button hooks was what uh, was used to get that it wouldn't that be a job first put your shoe on well, can you imagine putting these shoes on with all those buttons to do up goodness and here's a, a gal with I know that's her younger cousins little cousins in those bonnets small little button hook that you could probably have in your purse in case you needed one on the road somehow. But anyway, now where were we exactly? We should maybe start back here in the, in the end. Here is, this would go in your belt and hang here, of course, for your watch that you could probably put, it, put in a pocket down there. So that is some form of a, a watch fob carrier or something. I, I really don't know a lot about jewelry. And here's another one that maybe just hooked into your pocket or your belt buckle or I don't know, your belt loop. And uh, an end on it that'll hook onto your watch. Here's a little fancier one, which I assume then is for a lady with a heart on it and everything. This sort of sh clamp shut. See, there's a little mechanism there that'll clamp it down and your little watch would hang from it. And I I feel like our days of watches, pocket watches for men and these little dainty watches that ladies had hanging on them, usually they had them pinned up here or or on a uh, chain like a locket. This These are coming to an end. Um, I don't know exactly when it is because I cannot seem to find any research, but I know by the 20s you start to see pictures of Young girls, especially, like high school graduation pictures, and they're wearing a watch, wristwatch, and it's very prominent, like they're proud of it. So that uh, that would be so inconvenient, I'd think. Wristwatch is much handier. Here's a little school pin, 1903. A little probably gold. And we'd seen this in the display case, but real, quick, real quickly, but this beautiful, goes with the era, the type of things they were wearing, beautiful gold bracelet, or at least gold surfaced, and a, a lovely little pin. This was the type of clasp on old jewelry. It doesn't have the uh, revolving ring that you can hook kind of shut. It just has a little hook. Okay, I thought this was precious. Tiny little um, ink pen that you could carry in your purse. I'm going to ask my husband here. I'm thinking that this little lever that you can pick up has got something to do with filling it with ink. But I Compress the tube and then you release it and it sucks the ink in. Okay, you compress the tube, release it, and it'll suck some ink into it. Wouldn't that be a mess? Oh my gosh. But that's all they knew. We're very pre-ballpoint pen here. Sunglasses, for those that say sunglasses started in the 20s. Oh, they started a little sooner than that. Here's another pair back here on the hands. Another pair of very old glasses. But they're sunglasses. Okay. Remember, we did those when we get back there. Since we're on glasses again, here's the Pazne. We did several of them in the display case on the other side of the room there. This is one that doesn't really have anything. They don't even have a hole in the lens to put a chain in. Usually there's a little hole somewhere. And then this is a pair that has the chain hooked on and a nice hairpin so that you could have them secured into your hair, see, so. Anyway, and here we are with the Chesters, not Chichester, but 
Chichester's uh, Penny Royal Pills, which was really the morning after pill for women. It was quite dangerous to take, but it would cause you to miscarry. But that's all they had, and that's all they knew, and I guess they were willing to risk their lives. Never planning to, of course. This particular box, which is empty, is from 1888. We looked at it earlier. Yeah, and it has a, just a tiny little piece of the blue ribbon that is around it for your protection to know that nobody messed with your pills. That blue ribbon was the seal. And this one is just a little bit newer, 1907, the morning after pill. Made from P Penny Royal, which is a plant. Oh, I should have had that out. I wonder if I could get to it quickly. Oh, see, this is where you waste time. Well, Penny Royal is a pretty purple plant. Uh, my bad. Here, there we go. It's in a rubber band. Okay. Chichester's Penny Royal Pills, the morning after pill. Here's an ad. There's some information about it. But basically, it's what I've told you. And you can certainly Google it and learn more on your own. But there's the plant. Harmless, pretty little plant. But it has medicinal value if you're wanting and needing a morning after pill. I can't help but show you an electric car. Isn't that something? There are so many wonderful old pictures. These women in their hats. Oh, my gosh. Anyway. Now, where were we? Okay. Da -da 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 -da. There's a pretty little pin. Just a picture of a lady and her baby. The catalog has got this, and I think they called it Expanding Opera Bag. So, I should take it down and get into it for you. This thing could use a good polishing, but I wouldn't know how you'd do it. So you open your little lid, and then it expands. Let's get the chain out of the way. It expands about that far. You're not going to get any more open than that. I've got tissue paper in it just for the fun of it. Isn't that something? <laughs> oh, goodness. doesn't seem very convenient to me. Are you getting a bad picture of it? Well, just tell me when I need to move, okay? It's expandable top, and they called it an opera bag. I don't know if that's... Ah. Well, I know it goes back, but I'll mess with it later. All right, let's not even hang it up, because it gets in the way of the pictures. Behind it, this lovely lady. Isn't that something? Probably her graduation picture. Old stocking box. I'm sure there's nothing in it. I'll check. It's been a long time since I've been back here. Oh, my goodness. It's another morning veil. Gosh. I'm losing track of what I actually have. Okay. The gal that sold it to me I left me a note about it. But here's another morning veil. Thought I'd like the box, too. And I certainly do. And now I'll remember there's a morning veil in there that never got used. And another stocking box. I'm sure that doesn't have some... Well, it's got something in it. Ooh. I don't know. A receipt from something. And, and, of course, I don't know the age of it. It just... the All the uh, lettering just looks the era and the type of uh, stockings fit the catalog. Stocking mender. Heaven knows how you use that. But I suppose it's something that... The gals back then knew how to use this beautiful pair of shoes. Oh, my goodness. Now, the outlandish pointed toes we just went through in the 90s and early 2000s. <laughs> See where they got it from? Their great-great-grandmothers were doing the same thing. Isn't that amazing? And the leather is just so supple and so beautiful. And they're, oh, my goodness. So much more than a hundred years old. There's my aunt. Uh, oh, right now I can't even think of her name. Uh, Edith from England, and they're wearing a hat like that one that we talked about in the show. Now the, this uh, one we looked at it from the front. What makes this one a little more interesting is that it's a high button boot. A lot of times we say high button, and it really isn't button, but these really are buttons that have to be buttoned. Okay, where are we at now? Let's move over here. We can move our jewelry. We saw a little 
handbag, which is a lot like the styles I see in the books and the pictures. Very old. Um, old piece of jewelry that's actually glass. But I can't tell you much more about it than that. This is a little collar situation. Maybe it was part of a dress. Oh, it's got hooks and eyes. So it was probably hooked and eyed after you got your dress on. You put this over the top. And a picture of a gal. A couple little gals and they're pretty, pretty hats. So many pictures. Here we have a 1911 calendar. Pocket calendar. So see, these gals kept things in their handbags just like we do now. Of course, now everybody's calendar's on their phone. Another little brush. I'm a sucker for little brushes. This pair of uh, long, long, what would seem to be over gates, is really um, uh, leggings that they use for cycling and keeping warm and all types of things. So that's a longer business. Softer. Not made of leather like these are sometimes even... Well, they're always heavy, heavy wool felt. Sometimes leather, but the leather ones, I think, are more for exercising or whatever. Here's another use for a, a button hook. At the back of your dress, you somehow could use a button hook to get the button on the back done. Um, and it was talking about ratification of women's votes that the last few buttons are always the hardest. National suffrage. I thought that was pretty cute. Collars and buttons. Little souvenir buttons that you could have your photo put on a button. Another collar and another photo button. That happens to be a family member. Okay. Baker's hair tonic. I don't know if that's... I thought that's old, but my brother might swoop in and tell me it's a reproduction, too. I never know. <laughs> Some uh, dresser bottles and things. Here's lingerie pins. How they would keep their bra straps and slip straps and all their straps together with these little uh, fancy pins. Just like the gals would need to now. Although No, actually now. They just let them show. Now this is a hair receiver, which we talked about before. You kept your hair after you brushed your hair. You pulled it out of your hair brush. This is from a wig. And you kept the hair that you could pull out of your hair brush because you needed to stuff your big hairdo. Uh, you know, we've seen the pictures of the big hairdos. Needed to have a little oomph put up the back and around the side. So you would stuff your hair into your hair again. They, these would be rolled together in what would be called rats. And I think that, I would believe that's where we got the expression ratting our hair in the 60s, to mess it all up to add fullness without taking it out of our hairbrush. We just messed up what's on our hair. The hat pins that we looked at before, wonderful old uh, pin cushion here with a doll at the top. Now the, these we looked at in when I did the hat program, so we don't need to look at those again. Up here is something interesting, if I get it down. And the Antique Roadshow came, and I took this and asked them, and they really couldn't tell me what it was. But you see it in old movies, someone sitting on the porch, swatting the flies away like this. So, I don't know. His guess was it was from the 20s because of the opening of Tutankhamun's tomb in the 20s. Everything was Egyptian and all of that, but I, I think that was well before the 20s, too. So, whatever it is, it's a flicker made of a horse tail. So, you could flick away your, your uh, flies that are bothering you. I never did get to the gloves that are underneath these. These more lightweight sheer gloves with ruffles. Aren't they pretty? And this little leather repair. A little leather pair of gloves. And it, there's a price tag of a dollar and a half, size six and a half. They really look like they're from this era. I wouldn't know, but man, that does seem like gloves would, uh, would be expensive at a certain point there. I found this interesting. The um, pearl buttons of the day, actually made from pearls, and it was the Muscatine, Iowa, the world's biggest button market. 
And here's a picture of how the buttons were cut out of the shells. And here's actually the fella who uh, came from Germany. And um, he started the pearl button industry in Muscatine, Iowa. He had the equipment and the know-how. And it became the largest, the world's biggest button company in Muscatine, Iowa. And there's some of the buttons from that very place. Okay, here's something else kind of cool. A needle box or needle booklet. And I noticed it's a ship on it, and it's in Iowa. So I had to do a little looking that up, and here we are. The USS Iowa BB-4. And it was laid down, which I imagine that's the beginning, 1893, and launched in 1896, and sunk because it was out of date in March of 23. So, But there's a needle book, maybe some sailor bought these, I don't know, as a gift to his mother. Other little needle boxes. Um, Czechoslovakia on those. Here's a cute picture of all these people that are on a, okay, if I can read it, a trolley trip in L.A., September of 1915. And this woman here, if you can get close enough, and you maybe can't, yeah, you can. This lady right here looks like she's got the biggest, widest smile. It's a decoration along the bottom of the veil of her hat. Isn't that a wild thing? Let's see. What are we doing for time? 16, 17. Oh, let's try to do one more minute here. Let's go up this side here. This beautiful box um, of hat pins. But you'd buy them this way. Isn't that something? I suppose there's a year on it, but I can tell from the hats it belongs right here. And a roll up. This is something you could take with you. All the things you'd need for toiletries. Look at these huge hairpins. And here's some I found in a box of other things, but it's five cents. And it, the writing kind of looks like it would belong in this decade. Okay, hair combs. Here's a couple more hair combs. Um, here's a... Um, um, registration certificate, 1917, submitted himself a registration, has begun his, uh, this is a draft to get into World War One. okay, that's my grandfather, he was a horseshoer, but here he is doing a cannon preparation, it looks like, a little, bu uh, button hook, for little baby shoes that have buttons on them. And they were in a box, which is back here. Things were just as cute back then as they are now. This little baby with his little fanny in the air. And there's the little shoes that were in the box. Isn't that adorable? Okay, these silk scarves that the soldiers brought back. This one is from France or Frey. I bet Frey is brother. And it's Scotland. I see here we have a Scottish soldier, an American. I, I don't know if that'd be Prussian, France, or something. I don't know everything about what I have. Picture of my grandpa here. He was one of the doughboys. This is a curling iron. I imagine everybody knows that. They would put these down their lamps. If Probably one that wouldn't go right into the flame, but one that would have a part at the side and get them good and hot and then curl your hair and sometimes burn it off because there really was no temperature control. Okay, some crocheting books, some beautiful Egyptian lace. This is a uh, clasp for a belt maybe or a cape you might make or came off of a cape. I think we're kind of right here. Some sewing needles for the machine. Another old book, Priscilla was a big book for uh, uh, needle crafts. Maybe still is, actually. Let's stop right here, and we'll start in right about here next time. Thank you very much. We'll get through this sooner or later. Thank you.